Hi, welcome to Strength Coach TV. My name is Anthony Renna. Some of you might know me from the Strength Coach Podcast, strengthcoach.com or strength and conditioning webinars. This is Strength Coach TV and what I want to do here is provide something a little different that I'm already doing on the podcast and we get a lot of questions um, on the podcast and on strengthcoach.com about opening your own facility, about business questions and so what I wanted to do was you can see, first of all, I'm in my studio here at Five Iron Fitness. And I get a lot of people also come in here, they, they email me or call me and say, hey, I'd like to come down and you know just check out your facility and see what you're doing and ask you a couple of questions because I'm interested in opening a facility. And this is a good way for people who can't really get out to maybe up to Boston to see uh, Coach Boyle, Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning or Alan Cosgrove at Results Fitness in California or down to Texas to Todd Wright at Train for the Game. This is, I'm trying to bring that to you. and. Um, what we're going to do, and my theory is that when we go into a studio and we kind of walk around a little bit, talk to the owner manager, we get a little bit, a peek into their philosophy and into their program design based on how they design the studio, what are some things that are important to them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go into different studios, we're going to get a tour of the place, talk to the owner, the manager, and uh, just see what they did. And uh, hopefully it'll give you a sense about, um, number one, about what equipment they bought, what they thought was important, how they did their flooring maybe, um, and then also a little bit about their program design and, uh, and their philosophy. So for our first episode, we went up, uh, Dewey Nielsen and I, Dewey's from Impact Performance up in uh, Oregon, and what we did before the Perform Better Summit was we took a little tour before we went up to Providence. We went to Tim Uhas's place in Old Lyme, Connecticut, at um, U-House Performance. That's our first episode today. We're going to go visit Tim. We also went up to Frank Nash up uh, in Worcester and we went up to uh, Eric Cressy uh, for um, up in Hudson, Mass. And we went to his place. So we, those are future episodes. We're going up to Coach Boyle's place, up to Mike Boyle's strength and conditioning as well. And we're looking to go to as many facilities as we can. So today, we're going to go over to Tim U-House in Old Lyme, Connecticut to U-House Performance and get a little peek into, uh, into his facility. Anthony Renner from the Strength Coach Podcast and Strength and Conditioning Webinars.com. Continuing on my little tour of different facilities, we're here in Old Lyme, Connecticut at Tim Uhas's place, Uhas Performance Training. We're going to go inside. Tim's going to give us a little tour. We're going to ask him about maybe some challenges he's had in uh, being a facility owner. Timmy? All right. Tim, I'm going to hand this over to you. All right. Excellent, right? Uh, so uh, why don't you uh, start out, just give us a tour. Why well, certainly. Tell us, you know, a little bit about the design and what you did for the design. Sure. Okay, guys. Um, well, what we've got here, one of, the, one of the big things with me was to come up with a facility that uh, uh, had a great flow um, so that we could move groups pretty smoothly from, you know, from one group to the next. Um, we basically do it on a 30 to 45 minute uh, time frame. So when our athletes will come in, we'll have our warm-up area, which you can kind of see here. We'll start out with our, our rollers, and we've got our bin over here with our lacrosse balls and our tennis balls and all that kind of stuff. So we'll do our, our rollout, we'll do our stretch circuit uh, in this area, and then we'll move into our uh, more of our mobility type stuff right in this general area using this nice open space, which is one of the key things to my facility design was having more open space. Um, so the, the turf is actually about uh, 100 feet long, about 33 yards, by uh, 15 feet, 5 yards. And uh, so what we can do is we can do our mobility here, and then we will smoothly transition into uh, our activation phase, our section of the workout. Um, and that takes you know, about 5 minutes or so. Then we'll move right into our theme of the day, which is either linear speed or lateral speed and agility movement skill type stuff. Again, we're still on that on the turf. We're doing that. Then we'll move to our, uh, you know, our power, our plyos, and our med ball, our jump training, so to speak. So what we can do that with our boxes right here in this area, or our hurdles, which are down at the other end of the turf. We've got our wall that uh, my building owner was nice enough to put in for me. So we've got our, our cement block wall there where we can throw our med balls against. Um, and then we'll transition. Now we're at the, probably at the 45-minute mark where we will um, transition off of the turf Meanwhile, we've got, keep in mind, we've got our second group coming in behind right after that. They're already doing some of their warm-up uh, you know, warm stuff. They're doing their rollout. They're doing their, uh, their, stretch, their stretch circuit so they can follow right along behind the, next, the previous group. 
Uh, that first group is now done on the turf. Again, it's about 45 minute mark. They're moving over to their strength portion where they'll move into their explosive lift and you know, start utilizing the racks and the Kaiser equipment and uh, you know, our power blocks, our dumbbells. Um, you, know, we've, you can see we've got some, uh, each station has a slide, utility slide board we call, so we can do some slide board work there. Um, at the end, we'll transition you know, back to the uh, back of the facility where we've got, our, uh, we've got our conditioning area, so to speak. We'll do that with our Schwinn Airdynes, our, our uh, heavy duty slide boards. And we've also got our two treadmills. We've got a Woodway treadmill and a Nordatrack incline trainer, which we like to use for, for interval work, uh, incline work. Um, but again, a lot, of, a lot of this stuff will come back to uh, our turf area at the end where we may be doing a metabolic circuit for conditioning purposes. We might be pushing sleds. We might be doing our battling ropes. Um, we might be doing all sorts of stuff with maybe combining the Kaiser with it to into a you know a body weight type circuit or metabolic blast we call it. Um, so that'll wrap up depending on what the theme of the day is. Um, but uh, our biggest thing is to not have any type of uh, log jams we call them. We don't want anybody running into each other and, and we're pretty good. We're pretty good on that. We're pretty smooth. We're polished on it now so we get a good transition going through. Cool. Tell us about, uh, you know, basically being a facility owner, really your biggest challenge, you know, not only in the past, but kind of moving forward. Uh, great question, Ant. I think that the biggest challenge for, uh, for anybody really in the field, I think, is, is marketing. <laughs> um, we, we do things a little differently. I think, and, you know, not, so to speak, with, with you know, fr friends like you guys and everything, we know what we're doing. We've been doing it for a while now, but there's certain areas of the country, I think, where this is still kind of... Um, you know, behind the times a little bit, and down here in southeastern Connecticut, it's a little bit behind it. You know, people aren't, uh, they have a tough time understanding the way we train people. You know, we train them like athletes. It's, uh, it's almost like a team type environment in here. Um, and, and when you start talking to people about coming in and, you know, and staying committed for 12 weeks, 24 weeks, you know, the whole year of training, and they're coming three times a week at a set time, you know, it's totally alien to them, and, and it's, it's a little bit tough to get them to understand what we're doing. But one of the best things, knock on wood, we, we've, anybody that's come, we've never lost them. So once they get in, they learn the process, and they start seeing their results, you know, they, they start spreading the word a little bit. But, but to market it out there, and, and you got to be creative. you got to be creative, and I think one of the big things is, is if you're a person out there with a facility like this or planning on opening a facility like this, have a lot of open houses. We've been doing that. It's pretty successful. Um, we do some talks here for free. Um, we'll have like a, maybe a fat loss talk, secrets of fat loss type talk. We'll have the people come in. We'll put up a, we'll use the wall over here. We'll put a PowerPoint presentation on the wall and we'll go to town and we'll you know, answer a lot of questions and you know, kind of have a sample workout for them to see. So um, I think marketing is the biggest challenge for me anyway. Whether you're opening a small personal training studio or a major strength and conditioning facility, Perform Better's fitness facility design team will work with you from layout to installation to create the fitness facility design that best meets your needs and budget. Their team of facility design experts is dedicated to bringing you the best advice and equipment to help you and your teams perform better. Go to performbetter.com, fill out a facility design form, and one of their trained facility designers will contact you to get started on your fitness facility today. Go to performbetter.com. All right, well, that's going to do it for episode one of Strength Coach TV. Special thanks to Tim Uhas over at Uhas Performance for allowing us into his studio. Um, we're going to be doing this uh, right now once a week for about a month because I have some footage back from the summer. Uh, we're going to end up at the end of the month uh, um, of February. We're going to go up to Coach Boyle's place, but we have Eric Cressy and we have Frank Nash's place. Those are the next few episodes. If you have any questions, you can send them to strengthcoachpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.